Okay, let's try this problem. Uh, let's see. Not necessarily. No. N A H C O O. The weak acid. So let's see here. Well, so let's figure out which of these is the acid. Um, so which of these is the acid? Well, there's a strong clue. You were given the K A of this, so that's a clue that this must be the acid. So the H C O O H. That's formic acid. This is uh, so the formic acid is the acid. So what's the relationship between this and this? HCO. It's its conjugate base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. An acid is somebody who loses a proton. Well, what would this look like after it loses a proton? It would look like this, right? Now the sodium here is just a spectator ion to balance the negative charge because after this loses a proton, it would have a negative charge. Um, so this really is just the what's called the conjugate base, or since it's got the sodium, we could call it the conjugate salt, uh, the acid. I don't know how to put the sodium in the equation, though. Okay, all right. So in that case, just leave it out, because it's just a spectator, so it won't play much of a role. Okay. Okay, yeah, now let's talk about that a little. In fact, this is the only reaction we need. Um, the formic acid is going to go through the forward reaction of this reaction, and the sodium formate is going to go through the reverse reaction of this reaction. So they're both in the same reaction, and we don't need to write down any other reactions for this case. There was a good question about the sodium. The sodium here is just playing the role of a spectator ion. So we're just going to, there's no good place to put it into this equation. So we'll just leave the sodium out. We've already talked about how sodium is unreactive because uh, it's the conjugate of sodium hydroxide. Um, so we don't need to put the sodium into this reaction. So this is the only reaction that we're going to need. That's a good start. Now we're starting with one, let's be specific and say this is one molar, because we have one liter of solution. So one divided by one is one. And you also figured out um, that we should put in 0.5 divided by one is 0.5 molar of this. Uh, it might seem a little bit weird to start with the product, but this is the best way to analyze this. So we're starting with some of this left-hand reagent and some of the right-hand reagent. Yeah, the, the right idea at the beginning there. Is this reaction going to go to equilibrium or to completion? Equilibrium. Yeah, equilibrium. How do we know? There's a K A plus 
Yeah, we know this is a weak acid, and weak acids have weak conjugate bases. So we have a weak acid here and a weak conjugate base. Wait, I thought weak acid is strong. Yeah, everyone thinks that. It's kind of confusing. So the point here is <coughs> that... Um, Sorry, repeat that. I Weak acids have weak conjugate base. Okay, so let's try to clear that up. We know that this is a strong acid, which means that its conjugate, is, uh, its conjugate base is not really basic at all. This is the conjugate base of hydrochloric acid. Well, it can't really be basic at all since it's the conjugate of something strong. All right, now, these are both what we would call weak acids, right? Formic acid and acetic acid. So we put these both in the um, weak acid category because they both go to equilibrium. But between these, this is relatively stronger because it has a bigger Ka than acetic acid. So the point, the thing that's making us confused here is that we can use strong and weak in absolute terms or in relative terms. In absolute terms, both of these are weak acids. But in relative terms, this is stronger and this is weaker. So we just have to distinguish between those two. Does that make any sense? OK. All right. Now, um, what you're remembering is relatively stronger acids have relatively weaker conjugate bases. And relatively weaker acids have relatively stronger conjugate bases. But notice in that rule, I kept using the word relative. So that rule is about relative strength, um, not about absolute. So for example, which of these over here is relatively the strongest base? Cl minus. Now this is the strongest acid, so oh, should it have the strongest or the weakest conjugate? If this is a strong acid, should its conjugate be the strongest or the weakest of the bases? The weakest, yeah. Strong acids, um, relatively strong acids have relatively weak conjugate bases. So this is very weakly basic. In fact, in sense, it's not really basic at all because it's so weakly basic. <coughs> so would um, CO, um, CH3, wait, CH3CO be a strong acid? This strong would be base, strong base? This would be the relatively strongest base. And this will be a relatively weaker base. Then we just said this was the relatively stronger base, yeah, right? Yeah, but the strongest, so I thought the stronger Why base is in between. Right. Since the because the CH3 relatively is um, a weaker acid, so we could ask the stronger base. So let's see here. Between these two, this is the relatively stronger acid, so it should have the relatively weaker conjugate base. If we just compare these two down here. Um, and between these two, this is the relatively weaker acid, so it should have the relatively strongest. Uh, it should be the relatively strongest. So this is telling us that the relatively stronger ha acid has the relatively weaker base, and the relatively weaker acid has the relatively stronger base. So maybe I shouldn't have included these. This is just confusing us. I'm just comparing these two right now. Um, on the other hand, 
we would say that in absolute terms, this is an absolutely weak acid because it doesn't go to completion. And this is an absolutely weak acid. And these are both absolutely weak bases as well. Even though this is relatively stronger, it still doesn't go to completion. So in absolute terms, it's still absolutely a weak base. So these are both absolutely weak bases, both of these. because their reactions don't go to completion. What would be an absolutely strong base? Sodium hydroxide would be an absolutely strong base. 